welcome to Malvlog. This is my fifth installment, and I'm entitling this one Magic, Miracles, and Mysticism. Um, it's been a while since I've vlogged. Uh, last one was Samhain in the Underworld that I did at the end of October. Um, and one of the reasons why I haven't vlogged since is because I went through a classic Dark Night of the Soul. Uh, different than a shamanic descent, different than going into the underworld, um, but I'm not going to talk about that too much on this one, nor do I think I will vlog about it. But apparently I was in one for a very long time, uh, probably for about six, seven, or eight months. Um, and I did turn to a spiritual director for help, not a spiritual counselor. There's a difference. So if you suspect that you are going through a dark night of the soul, first of all, um, read up on it. Uh, St. John of the Cross's Dark Night of the Soul, he's the one who coined the term very helpful. Um, but also look for a spiritual director, someone who actually has some training and perhaps certification in the skill. Very helpful. Um, and if my spiritual director, Sid, is out there, his name is not Sid, that's just short for spiritual director. Uh, thank you. Could not have gotten through that without you, uh, because no one else around me knew what the hell was going on, least of all me. So, I'm out of that now, thankfully. Uh, it was really powerful, transformative experience. In fact, my main takeaway from it is um, Dark Night of the Soul is one of the most powerful mystical, spiritual transformations that you can go through that pretty much sucks beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, but I'm out of it and uh, transformed and watching my life transform now gradually as we go. Anyway, that leads me to today's topic, Magic, Miracles, and Mysticism. Uh, many years ago, I came across an audio recording of Carolyn Mays talking about the three levels of power. And uh, it was a very powerful piece, actually, where she kind of uses the archetypal framework of these three things, um, three levels of power, uh, the literal, the personal, and uh, the symbolic, as a way of framing things in your life and on your path. Very, very helpful. And that sort of simmered around in the back of my mind for a long time. The number three has been pretty recurring in my life, uh, even down to some personal numerology things, uh, made Mother Crone in particular. Um, but then as I sort of began integrating that archetype of the three levels of power into my life and seeing through that as an archetypal lens, I realized that pretty much everything I do, I do in three levels of power, and I think this is true for all of us but in particularly how I teach. Like, I teach three levels of tarot, level one, level two, level three, and I realize level one is the literal translation, uh, the intellectual part. Uh, the second is the intuitive or the personal, and then the third is the spiritual or the symbolic, so that totally made sense. Um, but even before that totally clicked into my head, I was already teaching a series, series of classes, actually more like a series of workshop or a workshop series called Magic Miracles and Mysticism. Well, it was during this dark night of the soul that it hit me sort of like a lightning bolt, more towards the end of it, I guess, where I saw that I just didn't incarnate to be a teacher. I certainly have the archetypal soul contract of a teacher, but that I also incarnated with a teaching, which is a little bit different than just coming in to be a teacher, and the teaching that I incarnated to teach, not just verbally or professionally, but through my life, are these three levels of power, magic, miracles, and mysticism. And now it's so clear that that's uh, what I've been teaching pretty much all of my life. So I wanted to find the three and then quickly go through what that is. So magic. My favorite defini definition of um, magic is from Starhawk. The ability to change consciousness at will. And I'm totally down with that. Uh, miracles. Most people want to keep miracles in the physical world, like turning water into wine, or a miraculous healing, or something like that. Uh, but I am a student, as well as a teacher, of the Course in Miracles, which is a little odd for a pagan and a witch. Um, but I have to say, it's been the Course in Miracles that's been my spiritual spine throughout. It's been incredibly helpful to me, teaching me how to forgive more in the quantum model than the Newtonian model. And you know, that's a whole other different conversation. Maybe I'll touch on it a little bit before I'm done today. Uh, but the miracle, as I define it, is as the Course defines it, is a shift in awareness from a thought system based in fear to a thought system based in love. And, yeah, I could do videos on A Course in Miracles, but there are, like, thousands of them on YouTube, so be careful, find your way through, because the Course has been really misinterpreted over the decades. 
Uh, so that would be my second level of power. Uh, and then the third is mysticism. Now, that word <laughs> mystical has really made its way into our culture in some very interesting ways. Mystic this, mystic that, mystic crystals, mystic pizza. Um, and I don't think people really understand the depth of what that word means and what it means to be a mystic. So I turn to Carolyn Mace to that where a mystic is someone who cultivates an intimate relationship with the divine. And that's a nice way of putting it. It really is a blood, sweat, and tears uh, path, and I don't recommend it, but if it's in you, you can't get away from it as much as I tried to. I can't get away from being a mystic. So these three levels of power, you can even uh, categorize them in terms of chakras. The three lower chakras are really the physical, literal world, and when I teach magic, through the lens of a witch. I don't teach ceremonial magic. It's too complex for me. Uh, just not my thing in this life. But really, it's the candles, the crystals, the herbs. Most people do magic in order to transform things in the outside world, which is valid to a point. But the outside world is the realm of effect. So, yeah, you can change as much as you want on the outside and the effect, but if you don't address the cause, the effect just replicates. Uh, that's why you could give people a lot of money, but if they don't shift their relationship with money on the internal, they're just going to end up pretty much back where they were. Um, and I love teaching magic. I love teaching magic as witchcraft. Uh, witch class cycle one and two have been a great joy to teach with Amy over the decades. Um, and really, it's witch class cycle one, the basic art and science, where we teach the, the basic magic stuff. Um, moon phases and astrological timing through the signs of the moon and wheel of the year and circle casting and quarter calls and oh by the way we also recorded all of those and i'm putting them up on vimeo on demand if you want to check those out uh, all of the trailers are on youtube though the miracles part of it i do teach course in miracles but the category of the teaching that i incarnated to do about miracles is more of the heart throat third eye and crown chakras, the world behind your eyes, the interior world, you could even call it the psychological world, um, where it's an alchemical laboratory inside of you. It's about how your spirit, your thoughts, your choices, and your emotions all kind of blend together to bring yourself into balance or congruence. Um, and there are so many different approaches to that from people who work with the law of attraction in a really clear, deep way, a lot of belief management a lot of um, choosing a better feeling thought, there you go, throat, heart, choosing a <laughs> better feeling heart, thought, uh, particularly the work of Abraham Hicks I find addresses that well. But also my work with the Course in Miracles in terms of the miracle being one of forgiveness has really been ultimately the biggest interior healer for me. To get that anything I see in another person or in any situation is a projection of my own shit, right? So anytime I forgive someone else, knowing if I'm doing it right, that I'm really healing myself because we're all one, right? So anything you see in another is what you don't want to see in yourself. A lot of shadow work in there too, in that miracle level of stuff. So I do love teaching miracles in its different ways and different forms, but uh, I just am starting to teach Miracles with Mark on Tuesday night in Sayville, and of course I will be uh, recording and hopefully live streaming those as well. Uh, I love The Course in Miracles. It is, really, if I had to drop everything else and focus only on one thing, personally, it would be Course in Miracles. It is the most freeing. It is the quickest form of alchemy that I've ever found, although not always so easy. Uh, alchemy in terms of turning lead or base metal into gold. Uh, it's not the easiest thing in the world to read, and certainly there are some great teachers, a lot of different teachers of the Course in Miracles. I came to the Course originally through the work of Marianne Williamson, who I adore. Met her twice. She's a sweetheart, and she's funny. You know, if you're funny, you got me. Uh, but also the work of um, Disappearance of the Universe, uh, uh, Your Ultimate Reality. Uh, Gary Renard, the author. Really, really good books, and a lot of people consider Disappearance of the Universe the can opener for the can that is The Course in Miracles, because it's not an easy read, but it's not an easy read for a good purpose. But most of all, I have to say, the work of Ken Wapnick, uh, who was one of the original teachers of The Course in Miracles back when it was still being formatted into chapters. Uh, he's got a lot of good stuff up on um, YouTube, although uh, no longer physically incarnate. And in his opinion, 
as well as the courses, none of us are really physical incarnate because the world is but a dream. There is no world. <laughs> That's a different topic for another day. But the last category, mysticism. Um, good God, I don't know that you can teach mysticism, but I do know that you can help people find parameters to make their way through. The thing about mysticism is, is it is based on mystery. Well, there's this joke. How many Gardnerian third degrees does it take to screw in a light bulb? I can't tell you. It's a mystery, right? Uh, you hear that word a lot in, uh, in particularly uh, Wiccan circumstances, uh, Wiccan conversations. The mysteries, the mysteries, the mysteries. Well, the thing about the mysteries in terms of mysticism is your job is not to solve the mysteries, but endure them, to follow the clues, to cultivate that intimate relationship with the divine and ultimately have the illusion of separation disappear. Oh, and that would correspond to the eighth chakra that hovers over the head. And I love mysticism. I love my connection with the divine. And I'm actually teaching that in Witch Class Cycle 3, which I will be teaching in March uh, in Sable as well as recording and uh, live streaming that, if we can get that to work. So these three levels of power and these eight chakras and the work of these magnificent teachers have been invaluable to me. But I felt like coming out of this dark night, it was time for me to kind of clarify for myself and to the world that, yeah, I am not just out of it, but I have such a clearer focus about what I came to do in this life. And it was hard won. Um, dark nights aren't fun. They're not, they're not the fun night of the soul. And by the way, if they only lasted an evening, that would be great, but they don't. Mine went on for months and months and months. But coming out of it, I really see that my life does have purpose. And personally, all I want to do in this life is croak with all my unfinished business completed, as much of it as I can. And that's not such a physical endeavor as it is an interior endeavor. To forgive everything that I can, to heal as much as I can. And The Course in Miracles says there is no healing without forgiveness. Which brings me to an important point. Magic, miracles, and mysticism. They're not necessarily three distinct categories. In fact, they all overlap that people walk into the door at the Silver Broom mostly wanting to know about magic, you know, spells and crystals and herbs, oh my. And we teach them that. Uh, but then at a certain point, after the beginner's luck sort of wears off, they usually want to go deeper. And so I bring them into that second level of power. Remember, the first one is literal. It's dealing with the literal physical world. But then you move into the interior world and you realize that you can't bitch and moan about money and do money spells and have them work. In other words, you have to be congruent on the inside. Your thoughts, your beliefs, your choices, your feelings, all of that have to be in alignment with your spirit and your soul. And then after a while, the calling gets stronger as you clear away more of the uh, repressed guilt and shame and fear in your interior world. You, there is a calling. There is a calling to meet the divine face to face. Um, and it's a calling I can't really resist anymore. That's why I pray and meditate every day for those glimpses, for those moments, for those holy instants where I choose to forgive, rise above the fray, and uh, stand on the lawns of heaven, as it were, leading into, obviously, that third category of mysticism. Now, here's the thing. I am a witch, and a lot of witches don't necessarily go the miraculous path, particularly through the Course in Miracles, because it has very Christian terminology. But if you read it, you'll see that it's used in radically non-Christian ways. In fact, the Course in Miracles is not a religion. It is a self-study course of spiritual psychotherapy. It's really all to heal the self, lowercase s, so that you can engage and realize you are the self, capital S, and there's a lot in there on that. But I also feel like I incarnated with this teaching to make this stuff available to people who would never look in those directions, who would never seek it because of the barriers of certain languages, and honestly, I don't blame them. Chances are, if you're a witch or a pagan, Christian terminology was something that was used against you. So the idea of running into something that uses the word Christ, which really is an ancient Greek word meaning anointed, and, you know, 
you read and hear other people talk about Jesus in terms of the Course, well, if you've been hit over the head with Jesus stuff, you're not going to run into the Course in Miracles, arms open. But I am here to tell you that Jesus is but a symbol of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, God, I wish I would have put a W in front of that H, it's the spirit of the whole. It's the right mind. It's the divine mind. It's our true mind. Uh, it is what we turned away from in order to experience the illusion of separation. So as a witch, and I'm an eclectic witch, I'm not Wiccan, I'm an eclectic witch, which means I will beg, borrow, and steal information and truth in particular, seek only truth, the sacred truth of the third eye, anywhere that I can find it so that I can live wisely and well and hopefully enjoy this world while I'm here. And I have to be honest with you, I'm sort of looking forward to awakening from this dream. I'm in no rush. Well, today I'm in no rush. Some days I'm an incredible rush. Who do I gotta forgive to get out of this? Because I find my deepest joy, peace, and satisfaction in the divine. I rest in God. Really wonderful. Uh, lesson from the Course, as well as the only lesson that repeats in the workbook, because The Course in Miracles is a textbook, a workbook, and a manual for teachers, is, I am not a body, I am free, for I am still as God created me. And I want to make that, as well as, of course, the magical and the mystical information available to pagans, and which is in particular, I'll, I'll teach anybody who's willing to learn. So. I want to put it in a context that they can get, oh my god, this is universal truth. That one particular group, religion, or organization can't monopolize spiritual truth, and ultimately, words are but symbols of symbols. Uh, the words, if the words are holding you back, that's not your true self saying that. That's the ego self, the separated self, the false self, the fearful self, uh, resisting your way out and not just your way out of any particular situation, although I find forgiveness, particularly as the miracle, to do that. It changes who you think you are, little by little. And it changes how you see this world, little by little. And it changes how you see other people, where then everything in this world is not happening to you as a victim. It's happening for you as a student, to teach you, to help you alchemize the lead in your system, and of course I'm speaking symbolic lead, into the gold of wisdom so that you can enjoy yourself in the dream, what's called the happy dream. That you realize that everything that happens in this world is a projection of your own mind, your own split mind, your own unhealed mind, and then you deal with things on the cause, the causal level. And then I have to say my spells work better because there's not that much resistance, although now I'm beginning to realize that a lot of spell work is just making quantum choices. Um, that things are set up before you even do the spell, but the spell is necessary psychologically and physically to help you make the shift from one paradigm into another, another whole conversation. The miraculous stuff, yeah, the choosing the better feeling thought, the bringing yourself into alignment with your true self, the choice of forgiveness to forgive, there is no happiness without forgiveness, and there is no healing without forgiveness. And I don't mean that forgiveness we were taught as kids. I mean real quantum-based, powerful stuff. Removes the blockages to love's presence, which is our divine inheritance. Another paraphrase from The Course in Miracles. And then you can really move into the mysticism. Now I know ultimately there's only one light, but an infinite lenses, infinite number of lenses through which we can view that light. So though I may talk about Source, and though I may talk about God, and I may talk about Goddess, I also talk about a pantheon of twelve gods that is with me all the time. And those are just lenses through which I can approach the Divine and work with and interact with these different aspects, though in truth all are one. Because let's see if I can remember this, this is from Marion Zimmer Bradley's um, The Mists of Avalon. All gods are one god, all goddesses one goddess, and in truth God and goddess are one. So that's what I came in to teach. That is the teaching that I came to incarnate into my life. To bring into the world, yes, verbally, I am a teacher in that way, I'm a wordsmith, uh, my art form is words, but also to live it through everything I do. To know that when I hold a door open for someone at the bank, that there's more power in that than is obvious. And that when I get pissed off in traffic, as I still do, 
that really that's not the truth of who I am and that I'm making a choice in that moment to come from pain and come from fear. This path has been incredibly healing and helpful for me, although I'm nowhere near done, but I think I can at least pass on some of what I've learned through a teaching, and I get to curse like a sailor as I do it, because that's my first language. Well, anyway, that's my vlog for today. I just wanted to sort of get it out there. <coughs> And I'm looking forward to what's coming in 2017. 2016 was a fucking shipwreck. But I got through it, and I'm better for the result of it. It didn't happen to me, it happened for me. And, whew, forgiveness lessons left, right, and center. But 2017 holds some new stuff and some new promise. Um, we're probably going to redo the Drawing the Circle website again. And hopefully we will have an app, and people will be able to access our videos on demand on the app. It's kind of exciting. Um, but until that happens, I'll still be cranking out videos on Vimeo. Oh, I love my Vimeo page. Find us on Vimeo. Uh, Drawing the circle, I'll put the link up. Um, and I will always be putting out stuff on YouTube. I really enjoy my YouTube time. And uh, of course, check out our website at drawingthecircle.com. You can certainly follow me on Facebook. we got a Facebook page for Drawing the Circle and the Silver Broom Ministries and a Facebook group. Oh God, we got a lot of groups for the Silver Broom and for the different classes and workshops that we have. But also, if you message me, you can add me on Facebook. I'm essentially a Facebook whore. And uh, a lot of my clients do. I like hearing how things go after I read them. Which, as a last note, I can say that even through a dark night of the soul, I was able to serve. My readings just got clearer, and they've maintained clear. So if you're interested in a reading, uh, email me at drawingthecircle at gmail. That's about it. I wish you all well, and uh, kind of a weird winter going on here in, in Long Island, but I'm looking forward to the rebirth of spring, and I'm looking forward to what happens next, and I wish you all the very, very best that the season has to offer. Cool beans. That's it.